Let me give you a brief introduction into Photoshop's adjustment layers. First I'll show you where to find them, what they do and how they are used. Then I will share my personal favorite adjustment layers with you. Adjustment layers are a great way to add some final retouching on your images. I love using them as a sort of a very last step in my editing process to apply very fine distinct changes. These layers can change colors as well as tones of your images without permanently changing pixel value. In other words, these are non-destructive adjustments. This way you have a lot of freedom to play around with these changes until you're happy with the outcome and if it doesn't work out, just delete the adjustment layer. Now where can we find these adjustment layers in Photoshop? In the layer panel all the way down you will find a bunch of different icons. Click on the circle one. These are our adjustment layers. On a closer inspection, you will notice these are split up in groups. The upper ones aren't that interesting for us as landscape photographers, as they simply create a layer filled with a solid, a gradient or a pattern. But below the first group is where it becomes interesting. Here we have the adjustment layers affecting the tones of your images, use these to change brightness and contrast. Then we have a whole bunch of adjustment layers targeting colors. So with those you can work on the saturation, change specific colors or adjust the color balance. And the bottom group is more for abstract effects. Besides gradient map and selective color I rarely use these. As we apply one of these layers it will be added on top in the layer panel. And under the properties window we can now adjust things to our liking. This will affect all the layers beneath the adjustment layer. But if you want to only change the layer right below it, you can hold down the Alt key and click between those two to create a clipping layer. This way, as you can see, the curves adjustment layer now only affects the layer directly beneath it. Notice how the changes done through the adjustment layer are globally. That means by default, they will cover the whole image. But these adjustment layers also automatically come with a layer mask. That means if you only want to target a certain area of your image, you can make use of that layer mask and non-destructively erase parts of the changes locally with the brush for example. Using a black brush, I brushed over the sky and the mountains in the distance. Now this adjustment layer will only affect the fog in the foreground. You can invert the layer mask by hitting Ctrl I and now the adjustment layer will only affect the upper part and the foreground will be masked out. Plus you can also play around with the opacity and the blending modes to get even more creative effects out of it. Now that we know where to find them and how to use them, let me show you my personal top 5 when editing landscape images. One adjustment layer I often use to add a little bit more punch and contrast to the image is the levels adjustment layer. This tool is basically like the tone curve but just looks a little bit different. So what I want to do is I want to make the shadows a little bit darker. In the levels adjustment layer you can see the histogram and you can also see we do have a lot of room to make the shadows deeper without risking any clipping. In this case what I'm going to do is to take the black point and pull it further up and thus just introducing more contrast to the image like this. Let's not overdo it, I think something like this looks good. I do want to apply a second levels adjustment layer on top. This time however I only want to affect the fog in the foreground. So what I'm going to do is use the gradient tool, click on the layer mask and I'm going to mask out the very top like this. Now with this levels adjustment layer I will only affect the fog in the foreground which I want to further boost the contrast on. So I'm just going to bring up the points for the blacks and add more punch to those fog waves. Just like this. Wonderful. The second adjustment layer I want to show you in detail is the color balance adjustment layer. With this one you can rather specifically control the colors of the highlights, the midtones and the shadows. So you can think of it kind of like split toning in Lightroom. For this scene we do have nice warm highlights and I want to make them a little bit warmer. So in the tones drop down menu go into the highlights. Now instead of making them colder I want to make them warmer. That means I'm going to use this slider right here and introduce more yellow tones to the highlights. Just like this. 
Of course, this will also slightly affect the Midtowns and the Shadows. So let's go into the Midtowns menu. I want to keep the Midtowns and the Shadows colder. So I'm going to again make use of this slider and let's bring it up more into the blue range, introducing more blue tones just a little bit. I want to keep this image on the warmer side, but this is looking good. Now let's go into the Shadows and basically do the same thing, bring up the blue tones. If you want to have a more contrasty look, you could also try to check Preserve Luminosity. As you can see, this will add a lot more punch to this image and we need to tone down these adjustments a bit in order to not overdo it, mainly the highlights in this case. So let's bring them down a notch and let's actually go into the midtones and bring them into the yellow range as well. You can see this is looking really, really good. I can deactivate the color balance adjustment layer for a moment so you can see the difference from before to after. For adjustment layer number three, I want to show you the selective color layer. As the name suggests, we can precisely target different color tones through the color drop down menu and change their appearance. So in this case, we do have some blue tones in the sky, which I want to make a little warmer. I'm going to head into the blue color. Then we have different sliders to adjust it. Bringing up the cyan color tones will make the sky more bluish. Of course, that's not what we want. So instead of bringing up cyan, we can bring it down and thus make all the blue tones look a little bit warmer. We can, of course, further push it by increasing the yellow tones and maybe even the magenta tones just a bit like this. We can also target the luminance of these colors by making use of the black slider. So bringing it up will make it darker while bringing it down will make all the blue tones brighter. We can also use this selective color adjustment layer to target the warmer tones of the image. So let's say we want to target the yellow tones and just give them more of a orange color tone. I'm going to use the magenta slider for that, bring it up just a bit, and you will see how these warmer clouds will shift more into the orange color range. We can further bring up the yellow tones to balance things out a bit, and let's bring down cyan. Of course, these are tiny adjustments, but as I said in the beginning of the video, these adjustment layers are a really great tool to fine tune your images at the very end of the post processing. Another great adjustment layer for color grading is the gradient map down here. At first, this is looking super weird because as I said, the adjustment layers down in this group are kind of not that useful for us as landscape photographers besides gradient map and selective color, of course. Now what we can do with gradient map is we can use it kind of like split toning. Click on the gradient map up in the properties panel. We can add colors on the left side. This color will be added to the shadows while the color on the right side will be added to the highlights. For some classic split toning, take the color for the shadows and we wanna apply a very dark cold blue tone to them. So something like this, okay. Then for the highlights, we want to apply a warm color tone. I wanna go with a very healthy saturated orange tone like this. Okay, let's click OK in the gradient editor. Still, this is looking like a very strange effect, but as I said earlier, we can make use of the blending modes. So open up the blending mode menu and here either go with overlay or soft light. I'm choosing soft light because this effect is a little bit weaker and I don't want to overdo it. With the gradient map adjustment layer, we have added a lot more contrast and slightly altered the colors of the highlights and the shadows. At this point, and this effect is still a bit too strong. So what we want to do is to bring down the opacity to right around 20% maybe. And now what this will do as I deactivate this adjustment layer, you will see we add a little more contrast to the scene plus a little bit of split toning as well. We can further tune this. So let's click on the gradient one more time. And I wanna create a third point for the midtones right in here. And since we have added a warm, bright color, the midtones got a little bit brighter and a little bit warmer this way. So this is looking good, let's hit okay. And that is the gradient map adjustment layer. Finally, my absolute favorite adjustment layer, the photo filter. What this will do is by default, it will make your image look warmer in a very nice, pleasing way without overdoing it. As you can see, I didn't change anything and the result is pretty good. Of course, we can further adjust this. There are a bunch of different presets. However, I'm most of the times using the same basic warming filter right here. We can 
bring up the density if you want to make this effect stronger. However, I rarely touch the density slider. This adjustment layer is something I use pretty much all of the time, especially for sunset images like these, where I just want to get out a little bit more warmth on the overall image. And these were my top five adjustment layers you can find in Photoshop. Let me know what you think of these and let me also know if you have any favorites yourself. And if you have any questions left, feel free to write a comment as well. So thank you very much for watching this video and see you all next time.